Uh, okay, it's recording. We are now recording, guys. So uh, I got to watch my P's and Q's. Not really. You're, I am who I am. All right. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to go through the revenue streams of the HVAC department, and I'm going to go, I'm going to show you, show us where our opportunity is in these revenue streams. And I'm going to use one customer as an example here. So you can see my screen, correct? We can. Okay, great. So basically in a 15-year period, and I'm going to generalize, but I'm going to use a 15-year period that we replaced Mrs. Jones's system. Is that fair? Sure. Okay. So in 15 years, we replaced Mrs. Jones's system, and let's say it's 10000 bucks. It could be more. It could be less. I'm just going to use 10000 because the numbers are round. All right. Uh, All right. What's your average sale there? I'd say 7,500. Okay. Well, I'm going to use 10,000 in this instance, but uh, 7,500 would make a, a larger impact in what I'm about to show you. Okay. So right now, if our average sale was $10,000, we're going to have about a 47% gross margin on that. And what that means is we're going to, our material cost and our labor cost and our sales commission is going to eat up 53% of that sale. And that's going to leave us with 47% or $4,700 to pay the bills with. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So as it, as it is right now, if all we did was replacement, that would be 100% of our weighted sales and 100% of our weighted gross profit. Our weighted sales and then gross profit over here. I did it backwards. All right. So then. Yep. We also have another component to this business, and that is repairs. Repairs, right? So over the life of a customer system, 15 years, we're generally going to have an average of three repairs. And those repairs are going to be about $1,000. Okay, now your, what's your average repair on HVC? I mean, I'd say that's probably close. Um, okay. You know, any major component like a inducer motor, blower motor, control board, you're probably looking at seven hundred and some dollars plus the trip charge and everything. So yeah. I'd say you're really close. Okay, very good. So what we've got here now is we've got two revenue streams. We've got replacement and we've got repair. Now, our replacement revenue went to seventy-seven percent weighted sales. And our, because our repairs are now taking up 23% of our total sales. Okay. Okay. Now our total, you know, right now we've got $1,100 or $11,000 in sales. Well, 23% of it is coming from service now and 77% has come from here. The gross margin, however, is 58%. So it's greater than it is at service. We generally keep more. And this, this gross margin doesn't have sales commission in it. It has technician commission and at, or technician wages and it has our material costs and so it generally comes out to about 58 percent gross margins so our weighted gross margins are 73 they dropped from 77 to 73 just to show you back here this was oh actually it's 100 percent back here and our our weighted gross profit has now come from repairs so still the lion's share of our gross profit comes from our replacement. Does that make sense? Almost yeah. almost a three to one ratio. Where right. So it's a bigger number to start with. Absolutely. It's a bigger number to start with. That's right. And this is pretty much what most companies rely on in their business. Now, you guys have service agreements, right? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to show you a place here where we've got service agreements. So over a 30-year period or 15 year period, we're going to sell, if we're lucky, 15 service agreements at $99 a piece. And these service agreements are just, we go out and we uh, do system checks. We check the customer system. What are your service agreements like? What are you, your service agreement? Uh, well, our, our service agreements are 179. And they get a full tune-up, so we check out all the parts, we clean up the system, 
Um, if they have a one inch filter, uh, we change that while we're there. Okay. Um, so 179, so you're getting about uh, $90 a trip. Yes. You're going out twice a year, right? Okay. Yep. So I want you to, I want you to understand that here in a minute because we're going to find out that 90 bucks a trip isn't going to cut it, cut mustard. But what we're recommending is you sell a service agreement because here's what I learned years ago was the price is the price. If you're going to include a service, you should charge the right price for it. So if you were to, how long does it take to clean a system? Uh, well, you mean like a tune-up cleaning or? Well, uh, clean, what you're doing on a service agreement. You're cleaning I mean, the system, I, right? I say, our guys are, I say our guys are on a call average an hour to an okay. hour and a half. Yeah, and what is your selling price per hour? I don't have that information. Okay. Um, a task that, well, I'll, I'll just give you a, a glimpse, and Brian can uh, shore that up for us. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bet it's over 300 bucks. Okay. So okay. if you're there an hour, but you're doing this twice, that's $600 to clean a system. Your service agreement needs to be at least 700 bucks. If if you're going to price if you're going to if you're going to price it to the work that you're actually doing, and this is where the fault of the industry is at right now. So you're you're in the same boat as everybody else. So don't worry about it. I'll show you how to get out of it. So, anyways, this service agreement here, all we're doing on this service agreement here is we are checking the system. We are providing two checks a year. Okay. We're going to provide two checks here. We're going to do a system check. We're going to check all the components on the system to verify that everything is working, okay, and and note anything that's not to the customer. That's like maybe there's the motor says 11 amps and you're pulling eight. The motor says seven amps, but you're pulling eight right now. You want to notice, you want to offer that to the customer, okay, letting them know that, you know, it's a little bit off spec. You want to point out anything that you see that isn't normal through all of your testing. And then obviously you'll want to see, you want to point out any dirt to a customer because that promotes cleaning a system. But for right now, a system check, if all we do is go out there and perform the system check, we're collecting $49.50 a call. So basically we have no gross profit because the the wage of the service technician is being eaten up by that 49.50 just for being out there. If all we're doing is running a service agreement, service call, service agreement call, and we're not collecting any money for anything, we're just, there's no money in it for the company, right? Because you're right. basically paying that to your service tech. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So right now, your gross profit in a 15 year period, you're doing all this activity in a 15 year period is $6,400. You're paying all your overhead with this right now. This is the money that we have to pay the overhead with. This is what the money is left after we pay the sales commission, the equipment cost, the installers cost, the service labor and the parts for repairs. Okay, that leaves us with this amount of money. Okay. When we had this amount of money to start, because we had fourteen thousand dollars in sales, but we only have six thousand four hundred forty dollars in gross profit to pay the bills, to pay the overhead. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that leaves you with a forty-four point five percent gross profit for the company. I'm not sure why that's forty-four point five. Oh, I know why, because I got a zero in here. So I got 47 here, I got 58 here, but I got zero gross profit with my service agreements because I'm just running the call. I'm not collecting any more money than the service agreement. And I, all that money I collect on the service agreement is going straight to the service tech. Yep. Okay. All right. 
So here's the piece that most companies forget about and neglect. And everything is pretty much predictable. What I've shown you here is pretty much predictable. Uh, every 15 years, that system's going to be replaced. Fairly predictable. There's going to be three repairs in 15 years. Pretty predictable. And 15 service agreements. Now, that's if it's perfect. You know, maybe a customer doesn't sign up every year. Maybe they do. Well, in this case, we're showing best case scenario. And even best case scenario, I got a zero. Even if they showed up once, I'm going out there once, I'm still going to have a zero here. So I'm not really contributing to the gross profit dollars. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Can you hear me? Because I'm getting some feedback. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good. All right. So now here's the piece that most people forget. In the same 15 year period, if we go out there 30 times a year, twice on our service agreements, we should be cleaning the system 30 times. Now, what is your definition of dirt? Uh, well, uh, I, I don't think that's a, a, a loose term. Uh, uh, dirt is dirt. Okay. So if you have a customer that has a dirty system, what is your definition of a dirty system? I mean, I would say dust on the inside of the cabinet, um, dirt in the blower, uh, maybe a dirty coil. Okay. Okay. How long would it take to clean a system? The entire system, like the evaporator coil, the blower motor, the cabinet, everything? Everything. So pull the blower motor out. Pull the coil out, everything. What if I were to tell you you didn't have to pull the blower motor out or the coil out? I'd be curious. Okay. Um, so, are there different levels of dirt that you see when you go out to systems? Well, absolutely. Some are some are cleaner than others, for sure. Okay. And. Uh, Let's just take a, for instance, um, a system that you just installed six months ago. Okay. Okay. And you went out six months after that to do their first system check under their service agreement. Yep. What is the likelihood that dirt would be present? I mean, I'd say it's probably pretty good. Okay. So, and... A system that is neglected would have probably layers of dirt on it, correct? So caked on dirt. Correct. That makes sense? And, uh, okay. So a system, a new system, and just to, I think your, your answer is absolutely correct. You're going to have some dirt. There is going to be some dirt. And here's why there's going to be some dirt, because a lot of people don't understand this. So I want to give you this information so you can use it to explain to your team. But how often would you say that, I always open up with this question, how often would you say that you dust your home? Most people would reply with every day. Yeah, <laughs> I don't dust mine every day. Uh, no, that's the reply you'd probably get from most people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so anyways, I asked this to my wife. I said, how often do you dust? She says, what, you keep taps on me? I said, no, it's just a question, dear. Come on. Uh, and she said, I don't know, maybe once a week, maybe maybe once every two weeks. I said, okay. So that's a housewife. She works, she lives in the house. She, the house is her home, okay? Uh, she volunteers up at the school, so she is busy. She's got stuff going on. But uh, she, she dusts her house. She dusts the house here about once every two weeks. So if she dusts the house, if the, the common homeowner dusts the house once every two weeks, would it make sense to clean the inside of the house once every 26 weeks? 
Okay. Okay. So there would be this dust comes through the ductwork, right? It goes through our entire system, correct? Yep. So it's it's landing in there somewhere. And a neglected system only becomes neglected because nobody ever cleaned it out routinely. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. Also, a routine system, I'm going to show you how to clean a system. I'm going to show you in your mind, because I'm going to do it verbally, how to clean a system in 45 minutes. I'm more curious. Okay, good. So, and now, the first time we clean these systems, we, uh, before I go there, let's talk about the math on the systems. So basically, the average cleaning is going to be about $250. And that's a $100 for the condenser, $100 for the A-coil, and $100 for the furnace or air handler. It, the problem right. with... The only, thing, the only thing I'd stop you with on that is, is um, you know, we are in Cleveland. So in December, January, and February, we're not going to get these guys going outside cleaning a condenser. You're my Ed McMahon. I was just about to say, you're only going to be able to do that once. Right. And that's why my average is 250 because okay. the next time I go, I'm going to get 100 for my furnace and 100 for the acorn. So for the year, I'm going to average 250 for each visit. So for 30 visits, I've got an average of 250. So I'm going to generate $7,500 over the course of 15 years just in cleanings. The part that most people don't understand is this next part. There's an 80% gross margin in cleaning. What parts do we have? We have labor. Now, part of our labor is being charged in the service agreement. But another part of the is going to be charged with we do the service. Okay. But you might have some baby wipes as and maybe some spray foam as your parts for doing this cleaning. Is that fair to say? Okay. Okay. Um, so you're going to have an 80% gross margin. Now you look at your weighted gross margin. The replacement system gives you the lion's share, 45%. 34%, though, is down here on the cleanings. You're getting uh, weighted sales. I'm sorry. Your weighted sales is 45%. Weighted sales for the cleanings is 34%. However, when you look at the gross profit, 38% of the gross profit, the money we have to pay our bills with, comes from the installation. 13% comes from the repair. And 49% comes from the cleaning revenue over the same 15-year period that we replace a system, that we repair the system three times, that we run a service call or service agreement 15 times, 30 times during the 15-year period. And we clean a system 30 times over a 15-year period because we're doing it twice a year. Because our gross profit is so high, this is the part, this is where most people lie. They got $6,400 in gross profit. They're missing almost another six, they're missing $6,000 in cleaning profit, gross profit. So they don't even have this. They're at 6,335. I don't know how the hell that got to 340. I got math set hand up there. That is 640. How did I get to 650? Oh, that's broken. Something got funky there, didn't it? 3,000. So, so then I guess. 
the question that's spinning through my mind is, is the customer that we've already had for 10 years where we've been charging them 179 and then we go out there twice a year and we do these cleanings, how do we train them that now they only pay $99 for us to just come in and basically do a visual inspection and test some parts and then charge them more for their cleaning? Or do you just roll this out for all new customers? Well, here's, here's, what, here's what I would recommend we do. First of all, I recommend we change our service agreement to $99. Okay. And offer the, offer the customer now a $99 service agreement. And it'll come a la carte with cleaning. Okay. So when you renew it, get your service agreements renewed to a $99. And we come out twice a year and check your system. Now, you know, I can send you the confessional and uh, bless you for your past sins, but that's about all I can do right there. Uh, so this is, at some point, you got to have to make a change. So how you do it is up to the company and your culture and how you want to have that done. But I'll say that the better, the sooner the better, because you're losing money the other way. You're losing money the current way that we're doing it. Plus, I'm going to show you why your business model is going to change when we do this. We haven't even talked about the new business model yet. Okay. So, but I, I want to first get the thought process in of how this happens. But you got a great point. Your consumer, you have trained them one way. I will. I will say this. And everybody um, else in the area is doing it the other way too. No, I, I get that. I get that, and that, that's fine. In 1990, I was everybody was time and material, and I became a flat rate contractor. And everybody said I was going to broke, and that didn't quite happen. Uh, so don't worry about what other people think. Don't worry about what your past has been. Your past, you're absolved of all your sins. Okay, we going forward. This is what we Brian has asked me to help roll out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and this is where the, I'm just going to be blunt about it. This is where the head trash comes in. Because we've never done it before, we're going to continue to do it. But when it's wrong, you're going to still continue to do it. Because we're missing, the, we're missing a, a tremendous amount of profit here. We're missing a tremendous amount of profit. This is, this is game-changing structure. I learned this process in the 80s. Okay? So... This is a process I've always lived with, and I've been a business coach with Nextar 15 years, and I'm just a slow learner because it took me about six years to realize people didn't understand it the way I understood it. Um, so I started training this about nine years ago, uh, and it's just just now rearing its ugly head again. Uh, but anyways, this is kind of this is the process. So I just want you to take this through to understand why we're offering this new process to you. It's not new. It's been done for years. Uh, do you know, are you an industry guy for a long time? Yep. Do you know who Ron Smith is? No. Okay. Well, Ron Smith was the grandfather of service agreements. And uh, Ron Smith had service agreements back in the day. And I'll tell you how the evolution went here because it's important that you understand the evolution. Ron Smith had three service agreements. He had a service agreement for systems between one and five years old, and they were $399, and they included the cleanings. He had a service agreement that was called his gold plan. Okay. He had mm -hmm. a silver plan for systems between five and 10 years old that were $299. And then for everything over 10, he had a $99 service agreement. Now, in both the gold and the silver, the gold plan he included cleanings with that $399. So he's basically getting $200 a visit. Now, granted, this is 1980. Okay. So we're, shit, we're 40 years ahead of that right now. So I think inflation probably could bring us to 250 a trip. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how Ron was running his business. He's one of the most successful 
HVAC contractors that has ever lived. He owned USA today. USA. Uh, I don't know if you heard of USA. They're down in Florida, but they're yeah. one of the largest HVC contractors. He sold that business to a consolidator in the nineties. So it's no, they changed the name and it's no longer there. It's, it's a service <laughs> expert company now. <laughs> yeah. I work for service experts. Okay. They, they bought Ron Smith's company. Okay. And they, they didn't listen to a damn thing he had to say, but they bought his company. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, so <clears throat> the dirt, he cleaned the dirt. And then the, the, I asked him this question when he rolled this out to me. I said, Ron, I said, why did you drop your price from $399 to $299 from the gold to the silver? He says, well, systems are under warranty for five years. So I don't get any chance of a repair, but after five, I want to at least get a chance for repair as well. So we dropped our price to two ninety nine, so customers wouldn't leave us for somebody else with a new agreement. I said, okay, so that makes sense. And I said, then why did you drop your over tens to ninety nine? He said, because I don't ever want to lose the chance to to replace their system. So I'm going to keep them. I'm going to be lower than anybody. And I go, okay, that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So what has happened here is what contractors do best is they see that uh, ABC company is selling a service agreement for 250 and they say, well, shoot, I can, I'll sell mine for 199. And then another guy says, well, shoot, he's selling his for 199. I'll sell mine for 179. And well, hell, if he's doing this for 179, I'm going to do mine for 129. And this was the conversation I had with Ron in 1990. I said, Ron, I says, I can't even, I couldn't sell that agreement today because people were including their cleanings in these service agreements. I can't get $399 or $299. I said, but what I can do is I can sell this $99 and I can charge a, a cleaning on each time I go out. And he says, you're a pretty perceptive little plumber because I was a plumber at the time. And then he kind of smirked at me. He goes, you're right. He says, today, if I were to do it, I'd have to do it the same way. But he says, I've built thousands of these service agreements. He had over 80,000 service agreements. He was in Florida company. And this is how, this is where his revenue stream has come from, from those service agreements, the revenue from those service agreements. That's why he was so attractive to purchase. And then service experts blew him up because they, they changed his service agreement like morons, uh, but that's what they did. So anyways, I started off at $99 and this is exactly what happened is we ended up getting service agreements. Now I didn't have any baggage like you have. So you have some history that you're hanging on to. 19, I was a plumber. Since, Go ahead. Since 1955 we've been doing it. Yeah. Yeah. you got some baggage. Yes. Uh, so, and I have a feeling that service agreement has changed since 1955. The price has went up, yes. Yeah, and I have a feeling that the thought process of the service agreement in 1955 is different than the thought process of what you offer in a service agreement today. Yes. Because cleaning was huge revenue stream for the HVC contractors in the 70s and early 80s. And I'll tell you why it's why it changed your friends, the manufacturers saw how much money the contractors were making with cleanings. They came up with a term in 1983, rolled it out in 1984 product. And the term was IAQ. So they have IAQ, they have IAQ products that now they sell the contractors and the techs. They bring these techs to these meetings saying, hey, we've got these electronic air cleaners. You don't ever have to clean the system. So what did the contractors do and the techs do? Well, hell, that's easier. It's more money. It's a bigger sale for me. And I don't have to clean the damn things. Shoot, I'll sell these things. Well, the thing is, is they're not 100%. There's no air filter that's 100%. Not even medical air filters are 100%. So dirt is still getting through the system. But they hoodwinked the contractor. Here, you got a $700, $800 install. 
to do this and they hoodwinked the contractor into selling IAQ product and took all their cleaning money away from them because now customers think they have a cleaning solution when they have an electronic air cleaner. And that's what changed the industry. Questions about that? I have no questions about that. I mean, I own an electronic air cleaner that I have on my system and it stays pretty darn clean. <clears throat> yep. It's a, I use the pristine air cleaner, well, the dynamic air cleaner. It's got changeable uh, media pads on it. And when I change yep. that thing, it is only dirty on the return side. Okay. I, I, I want to make you a gentleman's bet mm -hmm. for a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, a gentleman's bet for a hundred bucks that if you went and you took a baby wipe and you opened up your blower assembly, you know, I'm a plumber, so I call it the lower cabinet and the upper cabinet. You open up your lower cabinet and you wipe the walls of your system and you stood it next to a brand new baby wipe, you would see a difference. Yes. Another thing, just as you brought it up, just, you know, <laughs> nine times out of 10 anymore, though, these walls that you speak of are insulation. Wipe it on the wipe it on the squirrel cage then. OK. Yeah, because you got the squirrel cage in the bottom cabinet. Yeah, but the walls around it is, is mainly insulation now. It's a quiet thing. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. You can still wipe metal, wipe something metal, right inside that lower cabinet. Still well, a gentleman's bet for a hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I totally, I to, I totally agree with you. I, I, I know that will be there, but you, you, we spent a long time selling these exact IAQ products. You know. Oh, I, so, I understand. I understand, yeah. and you've got a one-time hit. Going back to the, going back to the baggage, it's like. You know, two years ago, someone bought this air cleaner from us, and then now I send a tech out there to say, hey, look at this dirt. And they're like, well, why did I spend this $700 on this air cleaner? You know? I, I'm not, I, you know, I totally understand your argument. What, what yeah. did you say? How much does it cost a customer to have an air cleaner put into their system? I think we're at like $649 right now, something like $649. that. $649. And now yeah. look at, Look at the cleaning revenue on your screen. Oh well, yeah, I see, I see it. Okay, you got hoodwinked. Yes, and we. I, I'm not saying the product's bad. I'm not saying that at all. But it's changed the contractor's process because there's still I dirt. I see exactly what you're saying. I, I'm I'm in agreement with you. You know that's that's. For lack of a better term, what you're saying is easier money. You know, if you're if you're not talking about actually pulling a blower motor and pulling a coil and being able to achieve these cleanings with the spray foam and baby wipes and get two hundred and fifty dollars a visit, that's easy money. That's, right. that's easier than buying an IAQ product and installing it and then maintaining that. Yes. It's easier yep. money. It's less. It's less overhead in the money. Uh, more profit. I, I totally agree. Okay. All right. That's that's where I want to get us to. That's that's all. I, and what we've done in the past is how you're going to have to transition. You and Brian are going to have to come up with a plan on how you're going to do your own transition. I just want to show you the proper way to maximize your HVAC business. Okay. Um, so. Uh, and, and, and now I want to structure your HVAC business. Now that you're, you're buying into the cleanings, have good gross margin, and we're leaving money on the table because uh, cleaning a system is going to take 45 minutes, and I'm going to give you the process on how to do that. Now, most systems, all systems that we installed, we always cut in an access door for the coil. Now, we didn't always just in just do service work on all the, the installs that we installed. So we did, did installs on others and they didn't put an access door. So I had to teach the techs how to cut in an access door. So we gave them a drill bit and we gave them a nibbler. 
and on their truck they had S drives and they had some metal. So we made our own 12 by 12 door, sometimes 14 by 14, depending on what we could do with the plenum that we had. Okay, got as big as access as we could get. Enough access to get a spray can in there to spray the coil down. So the first time we go out there, if we had to cut an access, I gave the guys another 20 minutes to make that happen. We didn't charge for it. We just said, you know what? I'm not gonna charge a customer for somebody to put an access in for them, but it's gonna give us access for the next 15 years. So we ate that piece, right? Because I wanted to get that coil clean. So we ate the piece, and that was a benefit to the customer that we they'd have access to get the coil clean the whole time. So then we sprayed the coil. So from right now, the, you're going to have to start with the mindset that you have an access panel. And now we're going to start the clock. You spray the, you spray the coil. You open the door. You spray the coil. It's going to take you about a minute to two minutes. Okay. You're going to then clean your furnace. You're going to get baby wipes out, and you're going to clean the furnace cabinets or air handler cabinets, part, depending on the company your country, part of the country you're in. But you're in a you're in a furnace area, or possibly just a boiler in an air handler area. I don't know. Uh, don't know how much combos are up up in your area. We're mainly uh, forced air gas. Okay, forced air. Okay, so you'll have furnace. So you'll clean that out. Now you can also clean the squirrel cage out. There is a tool that I used to buy at Johnstone that hooked onto my shop vac. And it had a venturi. This adapter had a venturi, so you weren't blowing out your shop vac. And the hose that came off of that was the size of your finger. And it was a six-foot hose, and it had three foot of attachment to it. It was three rods that attached together and it had a brush on the end of it, the size of your finger. And I could stick that through the squirrel cage. Okay. And I could move that across the blades, and the blades would then turn. So I'm and understand this is a routine cleaning. If it's a neglected system, I gotta pull that sucker. Because it's kicked on in there. And that takes hours at times, depending on the shape of this. But for routine cleaning, you can clean that furnace in 15 minutes with baby wipes and that little shop back tool. And I'll send you a link to that shop back tool. It's on Amazon now. Johnstone don't carry it anymore. Amazon has it for six bucks. Okay. Uh, and we wipe down the wipe down the cabinet, and then we go outside, and we get our bring our garden hose, and we have a three and a half foot piece of half inch copper with a ninety on it. We smash the end of the ninety so it made a nice spray, and we have a ball valve on the top for the hose to hook to. And we took the top portion of the condenser out. Okay, a top port, top screen over the fan blade, or sometimes we had to take the whole deck on top off, unfortunately. But that's what we had to do. Because we stuck that pipe down in the center of the coil and blew the water from inside to out. And we just went, went up and down that coil and it easily blew from the inside out. Whereas when you blew it from the outside to in, it ended up caking in there. And it took you more time to blow it out or to clean it out. So we found it was, clean, it was quicker to clean it out from the inside, blowing the water to the outside. So it was a nice heavy spray of water and it cleaned out. It took about 15 minutes to make that happen and put the cap back on. Okay, now this is not, this has nothing to do with checking the pressures. We did that when we did our system check. Okay, when we checked our system, we that was all part of that. So we've already checked the pressures out there to make sure that the Freon's right and everything's copacetic and the, the contactors aren't pitted and all that other kind of happy horseshit. Um, so from there, we go back inside and we bring in our little pump can, like a, a water bottle, pump can, and we spray down, because now the, the foam has had 30 minutes to work its way through the coil. 
and we spray down the coil and make sure that the pan is clean and the drain is clear. Make sure I'm clear about that. The drain has to be clear now because too many callbacks happen by just, oh, no foam anymore. So it's, everything's fine. Well, hell, it's caught the damn drain. Uh, so make sure the drain's open. And so you'll finish up your 45 minutes cleaning a system routinely taking that process. Does that make sense? Yeah. Once okay. you get your accesses and everything. Yeah. Once you get, you got to have your access points. And I would encourage your installers to cut an access point into every, any, every plenum that you guys install. It's very simple. Three S drives, piece of tape, foil tape. It's pretty easy to do. And makes, makes life a hell of a lot easier on your service techs. Uh, and it doesn't take them too long to do it. Okay. Um, so, and now, now let's think about this. And I want, I want you, how many service technicians do you guys have? Uh, uh, six. Six, okay. Of the six service technicians, if you were to tell them this right now, this is what you're going to start doing. How many of them would buy in? Uh, zero. Okay. That's a good answer. So here's the other part, and this is where maximum capacity comes in. This is all part of the new maximum capacity training that next is rolling out next year. Is, And I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm not – you guys have trained them, and you've showed them a way, and you cannot tell adults to do anything. Okay, okay, you have to show them and then they have to buy in. So I'm not even gonna have any of those guys do this, but here's what I'm gonna do. Here's what I'm gonna request that you do if you wanna move this process forward. Maximum capacity, have you heard much about the maximum capacity process yet? No. Okay, so maximum capacity is where we divide our service technicians into three silos. We have silo one, silo two, and silo three. Silo one represents the service technician that is green, that absolutely knows nothing about the industry. Matter of fact, he's never spoken the word HVAC or spelt the letters. Okay? Okay. Silo two is your technician that is great at fixing stuff. Oh, let me back up. Silo one, those technicians are only going to work on systems that are one to five years old. Silo two are your technical guru guys. They're going to work on systems from six to ten years old. Your silo three are your technicians that are great at turning, making turnovers for your sales team. Or if they're great at selling older equipment because your guys sell, okay? They're going to get the over 10 calls. And we're going to track this with our tech tracker, okay? And so now you've segregated your techs that can't sell equipment, but they can fix anything. You've got the techs that can sell equipment, and they can fix anything. And then you have the service technician that doesn't know crap, okay? Right. He's the green guy. And all you're going to do is teach him how to clean a system. His whole training is going to be on cleaning a system. And then you're going to, after he learns how to clean the system, he hadn't run a call yet. Okay. You got to teach him. Then you're going to teach him how to use some of your technical tools like meters and stuff like that so that he can go through and do a system check on a new system. And we're going to take the chance that nothing's wrong with the one to five year old systems. Okay. That's why we're putting on one to five year old systems because it's going to be hard to really mess this up. Now, granted a one to five year old system does go out because it was installed improperly. And we may have to call for backup when we have a guy out there doing that with a silo two guy, because he won't know how to fix it because we haven't trained him. He's just a nice kid. He's just a nice young man, a nice young lady. 
that wants a trade, okay? And we're going to teach them to trade, but we're going to teach them the right way now. We're going to teach them like it was 1950, okay? And we're going to teach them how to clean the system. And we're going to teach them how to go through the service agreement and then report back to the customer with the service agreement with everything checked off. Ms. Jones, I checked this, checked this, your amp pressures are this, or your amps are this, your whatever the hell they are, your pressures are this. Everything's, everything's checking out fine, Mrs. Jones. The only thing that I found was opens his hands and shows the dirty baby wipes is this. Your system needs to be cleaned. Okay. So we start selling cleanings at this point, at this level. And we don't train this technician technically anymore. We don't give him any more technical training until he has learned to sell cleanings. Because if you can't sell cleanings, you're just going to have a bunch of people that you have right now going forward. Okay? Yep. Does that make sense? Yep, bring in a new guy, train him this way, and then roll it through. Roll it through. And here's, what, here's what's going to happen. Here's the evolution of this happening because we've seen it happen. Okay? You bring in a new guy. He doesn't know anything. And everybody says, okay, he's a new guy. And he's, yeah, good. He's, he, he's doing all the system checks on the new systems. Good. Good. They love him because they're doing the calls they don't want to do. Okay? Right. And now pretty, pretty soon the guy gets really good at cleaning. And now you start posting sales by technician. And they start seeing these silo one techs outperforming them in the sales. Because when you, when you look at this, they can run four of these a day. That's $1,000 a day at an 80% gross margin. That's $800 in gross margin. Additional that the company would have to pay bills. In four weeks, that's $3,200. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, in a week. In a week, that's... Four thousand. That's thirty. Yeah, that's four thousand dollars in a week of gross profit. So they got five thousand dollars in sales, and four thousand dollars is gross profit. So how many of your service technicians are doing five thousand dollars a week right now? Well, if you take equipment sales out of it, no, take equipment sales out. Yes, take equipment sales out. I mean, you, we might have one that'll do it, you know, not just in a consistent one, but maybe this guy ran into X, Y, and Z and had a good week, but not yeah. consistent anybody. Okay. So here's what's going to happen. Your silo one techs are going to consistently be outperforming these savvy HVAC well-educated technicians. And they're going to come around someday, but we're not going to push them. They're going to come through the knothole themselves. I'm not pulling them through the knothole. Okay, I like that. Okay, so that's going to change your culture for your service technicians. It's a long plan. It's a year game. Okay, and it'll happen in a year. Okay, it'll take take time. Um, and the, here's what happens. No, when the when the tech then gets good at cleaning systems, we'll then enroll him in Next Tech Academy or any other technical school. Okay, and we'll now teach him. And now, pretty soon, the evolution of our company is looking good because now we've got some technical technicians that will move into Silo Two, and we'll clean the older systems now as well as repairing them. Or they may pop right up into silo three, where they're going to be getting the lead turnovers because they are they understand the game. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think that's the, what you just said is probably the only way to do it. Yeah, well, I don't see how you could do it. Here, here's, here's one thing you can't do is you cannot tell an adult to do anything. So if you go out there and tell your techs to start cleaning. 
Well, you can. You're just not going to have a good result. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can. But if you want a good result, you can't tell them. They, they have to discover it themselves. <laughs> and, and this process allows them to discover it. But you'll have to post the results of these texts, these silo one texts, as they start gaining traction. Does that make sense? It does. OK. And that's where we're going with this. That's, that's been right now the roadmap that I'm recommending that we go with this. I never had to do this. <clears throat> uh, I never had to change my text because all my texts already, they were groomed that way when we, when we hired right. them. Right. Uh, you, you start. If you I start with that. If you start with this, I definitely see how, you know, like you said, we have our baggage, you know, that we have to clear. But yeah. you are right. IQ it helps and it's and it's decent, but it doesn't cut it all the time. You know, IQ helps your revenue here and there and I'll tell you this too we used to do duck cleanings and we stopped doing duck cleanings and the reason I'm bringing this up because it's a cleaning right you know and I was telling Brian the other day you know we offer you know UV systems filtration systems humidifiers all that stuff and our guys sell it but they have to bring it up educate the customer it might be the first time they're hearing about it it might take two or three times to bring it up and then customers buy it um, but but with the with the duct cleanings, like you walk into somebody's house and they'll ask you for a duct cleaning. You know, so if we can get them to divert their attention from so much all of the duct work to their actual furnace, blower, motor, and coil, I see how that could work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a game changer. Yeah, because, you know, people do. They they think about, oh, I need to get my duct work clean. You know, you you walk in, hey, how much for a duct cleaning? Oh, I'm sorry, we don't do that, you know. But, you know, your dust is really coming from your blower motor and your furnace and your coil, so let's clean that out and keep your whole home clean. Yep, yep. If we keep cleaning that out, it'll, it'll help. It won't replace, you know, you clean a duct once. Well, uh, it's, it's going to get dirty. Well, again. like I like I tell customers when I sell them a new variable speed blower motor, you know, run this thing all the time. That'll bring your air past your filtration system, you know, three to four times an hour. Well, yeah. if, you're, if, if the, your coil's dirty and your cabinet's dirty and your air's coming across that three to four times an hour, it's just picking up dirt that's blowing through the house. And like I tell customers all the time, if we're not filtering it or catching it at the furnace, the next best filters in the house are your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, this program is, is something I believe Brian's wanting to get in place and wanted me to talk. He wanted to be on his phone call, but I couldn't get him. I don't know how to transfer. I sent him the go to meeting number, but, uh, he's, he's not around, I guess, to take he, it. He, he had a meeting this morning that must have ran long. Okay. Okay. Um, but what questions do you have on this? I mean, uh, I mean, I was asking as we went along, and you were answering them. So. Okay. I don't have any questions. Um, it's just going to be like you said. Me and Brian are going to have to sit down and see how we're gonna how we're gonna roll this out, and you know how we're gonna add these silo one technicians and still keep plenty of work for the rest of them too you know so but you're gonna you're gonna hear you're gonna hear more about the silo the 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 maximum capacity which is about the silos um about breaking your departments into silos types of text you know guys that excel we're gonna keep well, them excel another thing I mean, I could do that right now just off the top of my head but but another thing that's gonna be is getting it tracked correctly so that we know we're sending the right people to the right call you know it's it's also about internally having all of the systems in our system so we know okay this system's three years old let's send a silo one this system's 13 years old let's send our silo three yeah you you can't do that currently 
to uh, yes and no. What does that mean? Yes. I mean, we have some of it. Anything that we've installed, we definitely have. But sometimes with the with some of the customers, we don't have their their equipment information in our system. That's okay. something we've been working on internally right. to get all of our techs to gather that information when they're out there. All right. Here's where, here's. I don't know that you're the. This is where the call center would come into play. Uh, is we teach our call center to ask our customer, Mrs. Jones, do you know how? the age of your system. Uh, no, I don't. How long you lived in the house? Uh, five years. Have you ever replaced it? No. We know it's at least five now. And then when our technician goes out there, that technician has a role to play now, is he has to text back to the, or contact back to dispatch, telling us the age of the furnace, the age of the coil, or the condenser, I'm sorry, and the age of the water heater. You guys do plumbing as well? Absolutely. And we've actually been even working with our plumbers that when they're out there working on plumbing to even look at the, you know, because they could be potential HVAC customers, look at the system and put the model and serial number in our ESC. Yeah, I'm going to hold you off on that. I'm, I don't, I really don't want a plumber opening up the cabinet because they don't know how to put the freaking door back on. <laughs> well, you're a plumber, so I'll take your word on it. You better take my word on it. Yep, because <laughs> uh, I'm just saying I've seen it happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I believe. Uh, but so an I, HVAC I, I tech, an HVAC tech can get the age of the water heater every time. So our, we train our dispatcher not to let the technician have another job until we get the age of the condenser, the furnace, and the water heater from an HVAC tech. And for the plumber doesn't get another job until it gives us the age of the water heater and the age of the condenser out back. Because the sooner we capture this data, the, the more we can parse this data and then make outbound calls when we need them. And we can make them for silo three techs, the systems that are over 10 years old, the silo two text and the silo one text if we're short calls. So this way we can segregate our business and make sure we've got the right amount of calls with each silo. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. All right, good. So anyways, and, and make sure this thing too, make sure they give us the, the date, not the age. Don't say 10 years say 2009 because next year if it says 10 years in your system it'll always say 10 years <laughs> yeah you're right yeah we, okay. we definitely do that yeah okay all right well that's all i got if you got questions i'm more than happy to answer them uh if you don't have them now i'm more than happy to answer them if you yeah. have them when you get off this call all right, sounds good. I'm going to go over all this with Brian, and I look forward to rolling it out. All right, and I just unrecorded it, so I'm going to be sending it to Brian so you guys can review it, okay? All right, sounds good. Thanks for your all time. All right, guys, take care. Bye. Bye.